morning ladies welcome to uh, week one of September's coffee and card and uh, we've gone a bit Christmassy this month although not all the cards are Christmas cards and don't forget we've got a bonus card this month as well because um, we've got five Thursdays so right so this is the card we're making today and we are just purely stamping uh, the penguins this time uh, we're only just cutting out uh, the whole penguin at once uh, but I'll show you how that goes on right so pop that there so you can still see it there we go right. okay so here's your kit now I've die cut the letters out for you in the Merry Christmas but as you can imagine um, finding that little white dot uh, in a pack would be really difficult so I've actually added a rhinestone there a real red rhinestone and I will um, yeah, there's three actually in your pack so if you wanted to put them somewhere else I just thought one red rhinestone would almost be as bad as one little white dot uh, so so you've got some white card for stamping you've got your black strip which goes on there and then your background is actually from the um, Tidings of Christmas DSP. I just thought it was a really nice neutral background to go on there. Uh, we've got some white cards to go in the middle. And then this is your real red card base to go with your real red ink. And your Merry Christmas should be inside if they've uh, stayed where they were. Okay, so we'll put that to one side first. And we'll actually make... The penguins so on your smaller piece of white card you're going to stamp your penguins and I haven't got this. <laughs> one day I will be far more prepared on these videos than I will have I did get the punch forgot to get the stamp set and I need my nice new juicy memento black ink pad and yeah, I'm just going to leave the acetate off and we're going to get the penguin. Okay, so pop those out of the way, let it block. So, can't believe it's September. And I think this is, I was looking, I think this is the seventh coffee and card I've done. I was trying to work it out and then I've just realised I just need to look and see when I first started and that will tell me <laughs> how many I've done. So... Just going to really ink up my penguin. So I'm just going to put that one there. Okay. How cute is he? He's just adorable. So, and this is probably the simplest way to add a penguin to your card. got a feeling I've done these too low because <laughs> I think it's his head first and the punch looking at it never mind that's what scissors are for okay and then you've got a little gap on the end there for your scarf and your hat or the penguin scarf and hat which I've done in the real red which is the ink you've got with the pack going to get a slightly smaller block and my real ready just going to pop that stamp that down there and then grab the hat upside down because oh. <laughs> I've not stuck this on the back yet I can't quite work out where everything goes there we go and I prefer to put things back where they belong because then I can find them again so um hat, 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 she says there we go sorry for my arms being in the way there um, 
little hat as well. So there's a little bit of fussy cutting because we need to cut these two out, but everything else is on the punch. Right, so I'm going to build up the rest of the penguin now. So, and we've got two adorable little feet. How cute are they? So I'm just going to get my... Um, to leave that because I still need it. Let's get the Calypso coral out, which you got if you did last month's... No, if you did the uh, best wishes or biggest wishes one. Uh, biggest wish um, class, so you got a. Otherwise, just any orange ink, I suppose. I've even seen them done in black. So that's one pair of feet, two pair of feet, three pairs of feet. There's also a single foot that you can stamp. She says, can't see it now. Yes, there's a single foot that you can stamp and punch out as well using the punch. Um, and then I'm just going to do the beak, which has moved. <laughs> Minor panic there, I thought I'd lost it. That's always the worry with these tiny stamps. And just see this block's too big, I just caught it on the edge. So I'm just gonna put that just a little bit down. There we go. So I'm actually putting the edge of the stamp from where I'm looking at it. So the edge of this bit lining up with the end of the black. Some of them I've done with the beak right up to the back black, which also looks cute, but I think on this one it looks nice. A bit down. All right, and then one of them needs a red bow tie. Just line that up with the where the, the neck is. Just in the middle there. All dressed. I'm just loving these. They are so, so cute. I was thinking all the stamping's done, but it's not. <laughs> so I'll put those to one side. Just give them an extra minute to dry. And we'll turn our attention, attention to inside the card. So be cool, be merry, be... No, be cool, be chill, be merry. So. And I'm going to use this block. Now, next to the D block, I think this is one of the most useful ones. Um, it's actually an H block. Uh, <laughs> sounds like a prism. Um, and it's, it's, it's nice for the longer stamps and isn't as heavy as the I, which is really heavy. Um, and I think possibly, um, definitely, if I was going to make a few of these, I would use the Stamparatus. I wouldn't try and do this freehand. So, but we'll go for it. So, and I am just going to, a bit worried about that Mary there. I think I've got too much ink, so let's do that again. I did dip that side in, which is a worry when you've got a longer block. You need to try and be as even as you can when you're pressing in. So, just pick up a little bit of ink. And that's better, you can see there's no superfluous ink there that's gonna splodge everywhere. And then, just going to do that slightly off to one side. Beautiful. Pleased with that. Right, and then we do have another penguin. So I'll keep the red out because I need it. And this time the penguin thinks it's a reindeer. So just like, okay. <laughs> I think more because I had the stamp and I hadn't used it rather than it was a design choice, but it does look cute. Penguin. Oh, 
with his bow tie. And a little gift, which is there. on him it is so I'll get the Calypso coral out again and we're back on beaks and little feet so I've got the beak which is there Just as you build up the face, it really takes on the character, doesn't it? It's gorgeous. And then some little flippers. I don't know if I've told you before, um, it used to be my daughter's party trick. That we used to say to her, where do lions come from? And she'd go, Africa, she was very young. Um, probably about two and everyone's like wow that's amazing and then they say where do penguins come from and she go Africa so, <laughs> but I have recently learned that there are penguins in Africa so the child was correct so I did the um, antlers in early espresso and felt they were a little bit black, a little bit dark. So I'm thinking of a maybe a more of a mm, probably a soft suede this time. What I've done is I have positioned the antlers where I want them on his head. So you can see here, there's a little bit of a gap there. On the from the antlers to the head, so I've actually curved the stamp so it fits, and then I'll pick it up with the block. So I've got a a slightly better curve, I feel, on there. And I am going to use the soft suede. I mean, any neutral will do. Even um, crumb cake, early espresso, which a lot of you have got, um, is one of my go-to neutrals. Even continuing the black theme, to be honest, would work too. So I'm just going to position that on his head. Still ended up with a gap there, I think. Oh no, bit happier with that. So that sort of follows the ears. The I'm losing my words today. <laughs> follows the penguin's head. Right. So. So now we really have done all the stamping. So it's time for cutting out. I'd like to say this is the most complicated card in the series, but it's really not. So, <laughs> they're just so much fun, these. I've done so much with them. Uh, I'm really pleased with how they're coming out. Right. So let's just pop him, those out of there. I'll cut, I'll cut them out in a minute because um, they're going to take up some space. So as I said, yes, you need to do them. The heads are at the top of the sheet. So I'm just going to trim that off. So put that in my scraps bag. Uh, they are not for me to use. I actually donate them to nurseries. Um, so uh, when I went round to my daughter's, daughter's nursery, so Emily's nursery the other day, and I took a load with me and they were literally snatched out of my hands. She said, gosh, we're always looking for craft supplies. And it's the smallest. I think I'd, I'd stop at one, one centimetre. I don't put the one centimetre strips in. But everything else I do. Um, and the other, oh, the other nursery I take it to is one my sister picks up from. She's a childminder. Um, 
and they do use them because you don't want to give a two-year-old a massive piece of card to play with. I'm struggling to line this one up. Just bear with a second while I concentrate. Okay. That's one. Maybe this one will be a bit quicker. Two. And the last one. Clear up the mess <laughs> so they don't get in the way. There we go, and I'm just going to fussy cut out hats and scarves because we are. I noticed yesterday there was a little bit of a chill in the morning, although it's looking really warm today. I've not been out yet, uh, but autumn is my favourite season, and I love when it starts. Just getting that little bit, the crisper mornings, and then when the leaves start to change, and we start looking forward to our winter hobbies, <laughs> like card making, for instance. <laughs> now we're all out of the garden. And, um, oh, bonfire night. Love a good firework display. And I also have a holiday to look forward to, hopefully. Last year was the first time in decades that we haven't gone to Centre Parks in October. Um, so, yeah. And the other reason autumn, I look forward to autumn is it means the hay fever season stopped. So, yeah. Right, so I'm just cutting out his scarf. And again, I'm not moving the scissors much. I'm mainly moving the paper and leaving a little bit of a white around. So I think some, sometimes I do cut right up to the ink, but if, if you do that and you leave even the smallest white space, it really shouts, whereas because you've left one all the way around, even though it may not actually be that straight it just seems kinder to the eye somehow so a little bump on the knot there we go right okay and I'll just glue the penguins accessories on <laughs> little bit for the scarf there we go a little bit on my finger and then with the hat i just popped sort of a few little dots of glue on the edge there i'll put it on the other side on this one and then just added it just on the side of his head like that so, as I say, I've swapped, swapped sides on that one, but it doesn't match it on either side. Right, so pop those aside. So they're done now. Let's concentrate on this sentiment. So, yeah, so I've actually made this strip about half a centimetre smaller than this one because I, I wasn't happy. I felt it was a bit wide. Um, so your sentiments will fit nicely on here and you do need a pokey tool because I haven't, after cutting out eight of these, um, I was a bit sick of poking out all the little dibbly bits. So just going to pop these out. There we go. And come on, out you come. A 
does not want to come out. There it goes. That's too soft. I'm going to use the stamp and pierce mat because that's actually deforming the die. Cuts. Let's do there. It goes. Sometimes it just needs a little extra diddling. So I'm just going to line those up roughly where I want them, so that they're in the middle. So, yep, roughly. I'm going to stick the Christmas on first. So, just check them are still filming. Right, so I'm just going to put little dots on the Christmas, she says, and the glue starts coming out. Just little dots, just catching on the very narrow bits. Um, I do keep forgetting that there is a double-sided sticky that we do now, that you stick to the back of the card before you die cut, and then it just peels off and it's already sticky. Um, I do need to start using that more because it is handy, on, particularly on detailed dies like this. And even though it's, you know, it's more like a, a, a tape than a wet glue you do still have a bit of wriggle room as long as you don't press it down so you can position it so it's probably better than the wet glue because if you get the position wrong first time you put it down then you're twiddling around and you're getting little dots of glue everywhere so let's just pick that up okay Oops. Let's just position that. Yep, happy with that. <laughs> Glue on my finger. Uh, I do these things so you don't have to. So let's just see if we can get that back to roughly where it was. Using a glue-free finger. There we go. I'm just going to dab that off with a tissue. I'll get to them, we'll leave that. <laughs> right. There we go. So Christmas is down, so we'll go for the merry. The glue does dry clear, so it's not a problem. And glue is one of the things that I... Um, keep a stock off it's one of the things I'm allowed to keep a stock off and I can so if ever you desperately need some glue um, you don't have to wait to order just give me a bell and you can either pick it up or if I'm going to be doing some deliveries I'll drop it off right so I'm just gonna hold the end this time and just position the Mary I'm going to do the letter straight, I think. It's slightly higher. There we go. Merry Christmas. And then you don't have to put glue on the tiny little dot that won't be in your pack anyway. <laughs> uh, ooh, where's my diamantes? They're still in here. There we go. So there's a couple more if you want to put two more on. Or keep them all you know as you've got the punch and the stamp you could make some more cards I'm just going to pop that on there right now we're ready to build got 
half a centimetre gap all the way around there for the inside. I have to say the tidings and trimmings paper is probably my favourite out of the DSP. This catalogue, although I have to say now I've got the inky one. That's gorgeous as well. Okay. Just something I'm thinking about while we're doing this. If you're posting cards with rhinestones on, I often put um, a, an extra piece of paper in the envelope to protect the rhinestones so they don't come through the envelope or don't get knocked off or anything. So I'm just finishing off with some dimensionals, which are in here because I tidied up last night. <laughs> it's my new, um, not mantra, but uh, my new resolution that I tidy up when I finished every evening. And then I can find everything in the morning. It's really working quite well. Right, so I'm actually going to put this one in the middle. Uh, larger because it's the first one I picked up. Okay, and then we'll have his hat going that way towards the outside. And what you can do to sort of reinforce that joint is to put a, a, a dimensional over the hat and the body. And then just put another dimensional there. Just put him just on there. I think I've ended up going a bit that way this, this time, but it's fine. So if you start with the middle one, then you can work where you put in the others from there. There we go, so three gorgeous penguins sitting in a row there. And be cool, be chill, be merry uh, on the inside there. So I hope you've enjoyed making uh, today's card, as I say, first of five. So uh, and I'll, we'll catch up again next week. Take care. Bye.